In the last video, we saw how to build a k-means clustering model. We'll see in this video how to build a hierarchical uh, clustering model. So we'll take the same data set that we had taken in the last video, the iris data, which is which has got uh, data for flowers, the three species of flowers. We have got the petal length, petal width, sepal length, and sepal width of the flowers. Now this is uh, a label data, but we are not going to use the variable species. Okay, so those who haven't seen the data, let me show you this data. So it's a very popular data set. Um, all right, so we've got sepal length, sepal width, petal length, and petal width, and species. Species is the level, but we'll consider as if this data is unleveled, and we'll just you know remove this variable while building the model, and later on we'll just compare it with the actual cluster. So using the length and width of the flowers, we'll try to find out uh, the correct clustering or how many clusters of uh, flowers we have. You know, it, the idea is to find out um, clusters in the data sets, right? So we'll expect three clusters because we know before beforehand, but you know, in most real world scenarios, you won't know how many clusters are present. So that's slightly more difficult to you know find out. So one of the big difference or the main difference between k-means and the uh, hierarchical clustering is that in k-means, we need to know uh, the value of k. That means the number of clusters present or we at least think about the data to be present in the data so uh, uh, we need to uh, know how many clusters could be there in the data okay so that's uh, one big difference here in hierarchical clustering we need not provide the algorithm uh, as to how many clusters we think the data would be having so that's something that we find it out by running the algorithm so we don't need not know about it so that is more exploratory in nature okay this is more exploratory that means we explore the number of clusters we also explore uh, which observation belongs to which cluster okay so that's one uh, main difference the second important thing i'll talk about here is that uh, the way you, you we calculate distance between you know two clusters uh, so in the theory section uh, there is a video in this description section where i have explained uh, how we calculate the distance between you know different clusters? Uh, there are many ways. Uh, two important ways is to take the extreme points uh, to uh, farthest point, and then the other way could be to take the two nearest points and take the distance, and the third way could be take the average distance. Okay. So we have taken the uh, so by default uh, the function that we are going to use h cluster, which will do the hierarchy clustering by default it does complete linkage that means the way it calculates the distance between clusters is just by taking the uh, you know the distance between the most extreme points or the farthest points okay um, so that's by default we don't have to explicitly specify this we'll see you know some other ways also just for comparison as to which one does a better better job so the function that we will use is the edge cluster and um, we're going to have the iris data and we will take only the first four variables right uh, sepal length sepal width petal length petal width that's why we have you know done this uh, subset of it okay so let's run this um, the second in the second step we'll we'll try to plot and we will see how many we can consider uh, to be having you know clusters so how many clusters do we do we think that uh, is present in the data so I've got uh, you know clearly uh, clearly there are you know two clusters very clear so this one you can see the left one and the right one out of the below two ones right, if you see the bigger segments one of them could be a cluster okay but we are not very sure two is very clear or three also could be one of the case so we will see two and three so beforehand we know that there are three clusters because there are three species of data so we can go ahead with you know subsetting it for three but in more exploratory analysis where you know you do not know for sure how many clusters are there what you do is that you look at the way the 
you know the segmentation has happened and you only take the ones that is you know clearly visible to be different so here you can see a smaller one so you can take the complete one here it is slightly bigger and you can take this one as one cluster and the other one as another cluster so that could be thick cluster clearly so just by looking at you know this dendrogram we are sure that one of the cluster that we expect to be clearly you know visible in the data is not not very visible and we'll see that just by um, doing doing a cross validation so we'll take three clusters out of it the way we take three clusters out of several clusters that we just saw uh, okay so let me show you the plot again and a few more things to note here right so in hierarchy cluster we will we'll have uh, many number of uh, you know clusters and subclusters and and so on till the point that each observation is a cluster so in total we have 150 clusters to be precise if you have 1000 observations you will have 1000 clusters but important thing is to you know choose from top okay the bigger one will get the higher precedence while selecting the number of clusters so you have flexibility okay so we'll go with three um okay so the second step is is to do uh, is to cut the tree just to have optimal number of clusters we cannot have 150 clusters for 150 observations we'll cut it down for three so the function that we'll use is cut tree okay so we now cut it down to only three clusters because that's the optimal we we, we believe okay um okay so what's there in the in the variable so whatever so the entire 150 observations are now being clustered into three groups okay so if we just make it like let's say four you will see it will be four groups now you have one two three four right so if you just keep it to three then we'll have you know only three clusters one two and three all right so the next thing to do is to do some sort of a cross validation now that's the luxury we have here because the data here is level but in many situations you won't have that luxury you won't have a level uh, data to you know do cross validation sometimes you have you may not have a complete or a large set of uh, level data but you may have a small set of level data even there you can do the cross validation that's also a good way of knowing whether clustering is perfect or not so we will do a cross validation by taking the predicted cluster and the actual cluster the predicted clusters is there in the in the uh, variable cut the actual clusters are present in the iris species right so it's iris data we have this variable species which has got the three different types of species so you do a tabulation of that and see what's the result uh, well you can see um, that uh, all sitosa 50 out of 50 have been correctly classified uh, the virginica 49 of them have been correctly classified one uh, out of them is uh, not very correctly classified versicular is the one which is uh, getting affected the maximum that means only uh, you know there is a large classification error you know which is close to 50 percent classification error that's happening um, in virtual only 27 have been correctly classified 23 have been uh, incorrectly classified so that's an that's a clear issue as we are expecting one of the you know cluster that we were expecting to be very clear is not very clear here even on the dendrogram we saw that's not clear so we can try other linkage methods like the way distance is being calculated between you know, two uh, consecutive clusters while doing the merging okay so so we will take the um, the average linkage method so we'll make very small change to the syntax um, so the syntax remains same except the fact that we have now used method equal to average okay so in that case uh, instead of a complete linkage which takes the distance between the two um, uh, to extreme data point in 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 the conjugate in in the uh, clusters in the two clusters uh, while calculating the distance here it will take the average distance of all data points 
with the corresponding data points in the other cluster okay so for a better understanding of what these linkages are I have a, detail, I have a detailed explanation in the video in the description you can watch that video on clustering you will get a thorough overview of what clustering is all about and what the different linkages are and so on so okay so let's run this okay then we will plot so here we have slightly a better clarity right we can clearly see here that there are three clusters one is here this one the leftmost one and the rightmost one we have got two this one if you can see my cursor and the third one this one right so we clearly have three cluster this is this is a better dendrogram so this seems to be working better than the uh, complete leakage so we will cut it down to three clusters all right and the next thing we'll do is we'll tabulate it so we will tabulate uh, the actual data with the predicted data so the actual data is there in iris species species uh, the variable species and uh, we have the predictor one in the variable cut so now we see that all 50 sitosa have been correctly classified 50 versicular have been correctly classified virginica is having an issue now we are facing a different issue right so previously we used to have a correct classification of uh, virginica mostly a correct classification 49 out of 50 we got correctly classified but uh, virgicular had a problem we had almost like 50 percent error rates but here citos and virgicular have been uh, you know well classified but virginica is having an issue but the error rate is much less it is you know some somewhere around maybe 30 percent 25 percent 30 percent so depending on which category is more important from a classification point of view we'll choose which one to go with okay and there are many more methods also if we have only uh, you know taken down the two ones you can try out you know other methods as well and see which one is working fine um, one of the thing to uh, keep in mind while building clustering model is that to try out as many clustering models that you, you possibly can try you can also try k-means clustering and see which one is working uh, the best okay because Cross validation is a big issue in clustering. That's why it's always good to try out as many um, possible models and do the comparison in some way or the other. 